So we're gonna learn fizzbos. The floor is yours. Fizzbos. Okay. Who was a friend? Who was ever called fizzbos before? How did you feel about that <laughs> conversation? The one thing about fizzbos is they'll always answer the phone. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because they're trying to sell their house. But what? Give me something that they typically say to you. Bring me a buyer. Is that kind of as far as we get? And then we just hang up on them. They're already an agent. They're already an agent. We've seen some that they're already agent. Why do you keep calling me? I don't need an agent. I don't need an agent. Right. Okay. So I want to talk very quickly about the FISBO script, the phone call script. My, my, my favorite story, so when I met Tina, because I'd come from 17 years of running an ISA department with seven cold callers, and our scripts were so exact that I could drop dead. Just stand in there in the middle of a sentence and somebody could walk in and say exactly what I was saying. Like, I mean, it was a system. And everything that we do is so scripted, which gives me comfort, if you guys don't know me. Um, I talk a lot. My personality when I'm in sales, I have to learn how to stop talking. Does anybody have that problem in sales? If you're a talker, sometimes you'll talk yourself out of a sale. <laughs> Because you keep on going or you're talking about stuff that's important to you but not important to them. So in reality, and you said it's good sales is actually asking questions versus talking, right? So some of us have a natural ability and gift for sales um, and we have empathy and we care about people that makes us good at sales, but then you got to become a professional at sales, right? So I love scripts because where I would naturally keep talking, the script tells me to, <laughs> right? So I teach scripts to lots of people. People say, I don't, I don't like scripts. I'm never going to use a script. You definitely have a script. You are currently using a script. Whether it's a good script or a bad script is a different question, right? Because a lot of times it's like changing one word. The worst thing is if you're out here doing the work, making the calls, but you're not getting the results because you're saying the wrong thing, right? And so scripts are... It's a whole process to learn scripts. The very first month that I was here at EXP, we were downstairs in the office on that side. It was Tina's team and me, and there was a few other people, and they were like, who are these people? Why are they coming to our team meetings, <laughs> right? Because it was like so weird. But the very first thing for the first month, she gave the challenge. We partnered up with somebody else and we had to call them with the listing presentation every single day and leave a voicemail on their on their phone. They didn't have to listen, but we had to leave a voicemail and say the entire listing presentation in three minutes. Right. And we had to say it over and over and over 30 days. And if you missed a day, you had to pay the other person five hundred dollars. <laughs> That's called accountability. And everybody needs accountability. Right, whether it's peer to peer or if you have a team leader or a coach, whatever, you have, everyone needs accountability. I don't care who you are, what level that you're at, accountability is the only thing that's going to move the needle forward. Right, when we have deadlines for things, we do them. Right, so I learned the listening presentation real quick, and I think it's important, even if you're a buyer's agent, to understand the listing presentation so that you understand what the seller is hearing and thinking. Because doesn't that help you write a better offer to know what's being said on the other side, right? So the FISBO script, and it's very simple, guys, the FISBO script, there's a lot of different iterations and versions of it, but at its core, at its best, at its highest, is, is the commission the main reason that you're selling it on your own? Are you trying to save money on commission? Isn't, isn't that the only reason they're doing it for the most part? Yep. Right. And they're going to say, yeah, 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 I want to save money on commission. Oh, that makes sense to me. I'm looking for a deal too. Right? So don't try and fight against it, FISBO. That's not the personality that you're going to fight against. Right? They're looking for a fight. Can anybody agree with me that FISBO is for the most part? They're already kind of like defensive. The worst thing you can do in a defensive situation is also be defensive, right? So what's cool with business, they get to be fun because you do what's called a pattern interrupt. You know what they're used to people saying? Well, I've got a buyer. I might have a buyer. Can I come see your house because I might have a buyer? Can you say that and get in the door? 
Yes, you can. They're like, great, come over. But when you're going there, are they thinking of you as, as a listing agent? No, no, no. no right. So then, then now you're in a bait and switch situation, which makes it even harder. However, when you're new, that could be a good way for you to just practice getting an appointment. And if that builds your confidence and that makes you happy and I got an appointment, that's better than nothing, right? If that's how you have to start, it's a very soft and gentle approach and you get a chance to be in front of them and meet with them, because that's your thought process in your head. It's like, if I just get a chance to meet with them, they're going to love me. I'm awesome. Put me, in front, put me in front of people. Does anybody feel like they're better in person than on the phone? But most of us are like, put me in front of people. I'll do the song and dance, right? And they're going to like, so there is a little, there is that validity to that approach. It's just a longer timeline. Fizbos are all about follow-up, right? Well, all of sales is all about follow-up, really, okay? But here's the thing. The agent who's confident enough to do the script correctly is going to get the listing. Because the script is, hey, this is the owner of 123 Main Street. Hey, this is Sheridan Zaddy with the XP. I'm giving you a call. I see that you have the house on the market and you're selling it by yourself, correct? Uh, can I ask you a question? Is saving the commission the main reason you're selling it by yourself? Why? I'm not wasting my time. They don't want me to waste their time. I don't want to waste my time. They're not expecting you to say that. They're like, oh, somebody's being honest with me. <laughs> somebody's just getting right to the point. Oh, I might, so because FISBOs are direct shooters, straight shooters. They like straight shooters. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just figured, you know, the market's hot right now. Do you know what I mean? If we can save, yeah, that's cool. You guys want to pay a buyer's agent though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're willing, or some of them now they're like, no, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? Now with the whole NAR stuff, right? Okay. So I got a question. If there was a way that I could show you how it can make you more money, even after commission is paid, is that something that you'd be interested in looking at? Now, there's some very specific reasons that sentence is structured like that. Because I'm not saying you're not going to pay anything. But at the end of the day, do you care how much I'm making? Or do you care how much you're making? If there's a way that I could show you how you can make more money, even after commission is paid, that's something that you're interested in looking at. I didn't say, are you going to hire me? Also, is that something that you're interested in looking at? Who would say no to that? The question is set up that if you say no, you sound really crazy. <laughs> Who would not want to make more money even after commission is paid? What are they going to say? No, they're going to say, I don't see how you can do that. Right. Yeah. If you read the script, it's literally in the script. The next part of the script is, I don't see how you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> because that's common sense, guys. I mean, we have to take off the realtor hat and put on like normal human hat. But like normal human being, like I don't see how you can do that. So then the script becomes, of course you don't, because if you did, you would have done it already, right? But at the same time, if there was a way that I could show you how I could make you more money even after commission is paid, is that something that you're interested in looking at? And no matter what they say, yeah, yeah, totally. But at the same time, if there was a way, like you just got to keep on going back. Because the big mistake here that we make as new agents is trying to sell them on the phone. Try to convince them to work. No, I'm better. I've got this plan. I've done it. And then they're going to, because remember, when you're trying to prove yourself to them, you lost. We're not selling on the phone. This is going to be the biggest thing I can import, impart to you guys. The purpose of every phone call is to get an appointment. The only reason we're calling you is to get an appointment. Because why would they buy the cow if they're going to get the milk for free? Right? I understand. But if there was a way, in the realm of all that's possible, if there was a way, and then if they just really, like, look, if I can make you $10,000 more dollars, then doing this yourself and commissions are paid and you did no work, is it worth talking to me for 15 minutes? That's like $40,000 an hour. It's a pretty good hourly rate. Sometimes you got to snap people out of like, oh, I'm talking to another agent, right? So sometimes you can, that's why the business is going to be fun. It's not really a customer service call, right? You can say these things with business. The cool thing is, and I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. I'm, anybody else a perfectionist? People pleaser? Overachiever. Right, so <laughs> coming into this business, and I'm used to having like 80 to 90% closing ratio on anything I've ever done before. And then you're going to come into this business, and it's like, what do you mean I'm not going to sign 100% of people that I talk to? <laughs> so take the pressure off yourself. 
it's okay for them to say no. One of the things that Tina was talking to us about uh, the ratios, I think it's helpful if you guys understand the expected ratios. The expected ratios is you're gonna call 100 people and you might talk to 10. And then of those 10, you might get one appointment. So if I, I just called 50 people, you didn't call 100. Because it's not like you're gonna talk to 10 people and talk to one person, that's not how it works. You gotta talk to 100 people to talk to 10 people because those 10 people may be at the very end. So most of the time the answer is you just didn't do enough. You gotta go 100 people to speak to 10 people to make one appointment. That will be your average over time. You need to book five appointments. You're gonna to call to do the pre-qualifying listing call. It is the most important part of this process. If you don't do this, you're wasting a lot of time. Most of us don't wanna do the pre-qualification listing call, which we're gonna go over in the afternoon. But it is what preps us for the listing appointment. It sets you up to knock down that appointment. If you don't do this call and you don't understand what you're walking into, you can't be as prepared as you need to be. We're afraid to do this call because we're asking them if they have any questions. <laughs> we're asking them how much money do they owe. We're asking very uncomfortable questions. And I will tell you, new salespeople are afraid to ask these questions because you just called 100 people to get this one appointment. You don't want them to cancel. Let me just go. I'll just convince them when I'm in front of them. It's not going to work. Then if you need to do that to build your confidence and just get practice, do that. Right? So there's levels and levels and levels and layers and layers and layers, and you get better and better over time. But when you're doing this consistently, you're like, I cannot wake up like this. This requires effort. <laughs> I got to get somebody to watch the kid. I got to drive. I got to pull comps. Like, I'm not doing that for a pretend appointment. Because what can I do instead? Make 100 more phone calls. Right? Okay. So again, you'll get to that level if you continue to make the calls. Problem is sometimes you just don't get to that level because you're so afraid to start. Has anybody ever tried calling a FISBO before? Has anybody not tried to call a FISBO before? Yeah. All right. What is holding us back? Is it fear of what they're going to say? I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. So if there's uh, the top producers in the room, you guys are not going to understand this. My biggest thing when I'm talking to team leaders, they don't understand why there's such a hesitancy with other agents, newer agents. The fear that's happening to you when you think of picking up that phone, the same fight or flight response that's happening in your body is the same as if you're being chased by a bear. <laughs> it's valid, it's real. The fear is real. But the only way to get over fear is to actually do it. I want you guys to think of like a little baby and you're at the beach and you're trying to put their toes in the water for the first time and they're like, yeah, because like, they don't know, right? They don't know what's going to happen. There could be sharks. Not that they're going to be sharks or babies, but you get the point, okay? But when you just, you put a toe in, oh, this is not that bad. So I want you to take that pressure off of yourself and just try and fail. And it's okay to fail. I think that's something that we have to kind of articulate and say, you have permission. Because if you're an overachiever, people pleaser, <laughs> perfectionist. It's hard to give yourself permission to fail and understand it's okay. Oh, that was one of my notes. That's okay. Cross it off the list. So they gave us a, Kevin gave us a, a sheet with a hundred boxes on it. And we just go and check off the nose. And then we make a game and a contest. Who can get the most nose? <laughs> so it's a shift in mentality of like, ring the bell if you got a no. Woo! You know what I mean? So it, again, it's, the psychology of motivation, what gets us to do these things. Here's the thing. The biggest reason why people don't make that FISBO call is because the script is, if I can show you how I can make more money even after commissions are paid and something you're interested in looking at, and in your mind, there's no way I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> because they're already overpriced, they're FISBOs. They're already overpriced, they're FISBOs. All FISBOs are overpriced, almost all. Not all, actually, some of them are priced correctly, just have no pictures and no one can find them because they're FISBOs, right? So the next question becomes, how do you as an agent make them more money even after commission is paid? So you're nervous to say that and promise that because you don't even know how to answer that question. So the next question is like, oh, I'm gonna just go right into the listing presentation and show them all the comments about how they're like $100,000 overpriced. You can't just do a regular listing presentation. 
there has to be a segue between that phone call and the listing presentation. So there is a report that comes out every single year. I need you guys to memorize these numbers. The National Association of Realtors does a report every single, every year or two. You guys know we have the whole think tank in the division for research. And they research all of the homes that were sold in the United States. Most recent one, I think it's 2023. Out of all of the houses that sold in the United States, 93% of them sold with an agent. Of the 7% that did not sell with an agent, 4% were when the buyer and seller already knew each other. So do you have a chance of selling this house by yourself? Yeah, 3% chance. You do. You do have a chance. And you deserve the chance. You absolutely have the right to try and sell your house by yourself. We're not arguing that. It is not a very good chance. And then if they took all of the homes that sold with an agent and all the homes that sold without an agent, the median sales price of homes that sold with an agent sold for 22% more than homes that sold without an agent. Okay, here's the thing. The price that they're listed at, they're never going to sell it. Never, it's never gonna happen. So you're trying to get them from, I'm listed here on Zillow, and I'm gonna sell for this number with paying zero commission to, you're never gonna sell at this number because that's not real. So this is what the market is telling us is the price for this. Not me, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. The market is telling us this because I'm gonna go in with all the facts and the data and be prepared and all that jazz. But I've got to start with, listen, let me tell you this. I don't know if you're familiar with this report. Go through those numbers, know those numbers by heart. The next question is why? Why do homes that sell with an agent sell for so much more than homes that sell without an agent? Does anybody, can anybody think of why? Exposure. Exposure. Nobody knows your house is available. You guys know how to find FISBOs? How do you find FISBOs? Where? Drive-bys. Okay, drive-bys. Okay. Zillow. Zillow. And how do you go on Zillow to find FISBOs? You have to click a button to find it. They don't just show up in the search. So you know who's looking for FISBOs? Yeah. <laughs> So there's three people who look for business. Agents who want to sell your house. Investors. Are they going to give you the highest price for the house? Mm -hmm. People who can't qualify for mortgages. Because what they're trying to do is to do like rent to own, sell the finance. So of all of the, the buyers that we work with buyers, even of the ones that we meet as agents, how many of them are ready, willing, and able? Like 4%. They can be ready, but not willing and able. They can be willing, but not ready and able. Isn't that our job as buyer's agents? To make sure people are ready, willing, and able. You can have somebody who who's, wants to buy a house, but they have all their assets tied in a current house that they own. Those people aren't even looking. And this is take off the realtor hat, put on human hat. Supply and demand. So don't talk realtor speak. Supply and demand. When a house, when more people see it, will you get a higher price or a lower price? If you have a lot of, if I have 100 people in here on the first weekend, and I'm selling the house like an auction, am I able to bid people up? If I have zero people in the house and it's 30 days in the market, am I going to get the highest and best? This is common sense, people. When you see a house that's in the market for 30 days, what do you say? Under do. What, what, when you see a house on the market, on the real market, what's, 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 what's the first thing? That, what's wrong with it? Something wrong with it. What's wrong with it is overpriced. Because what's the one reason houses don't sell? Overpriced. The only reason. For the price and condition, it's overpriced. The condition and location is overpriced. Price cures all. Can you increase? Can you increase or improve condition? 
-hmm. Yes. So then you can sell it. Can you change location? Mm -hmm. Is that why sometimes a house that has a um, highway in the backyard is not going to sell for the same price as their neighbor that doesn't have a house in the backyard? Is this why we don't use RPR for comps? Do we go in the MLS and see agent marks? and we look at maps and tax records so we know actually what's happening with the property mm -hmm. or drive by. This is market knowledge. This is why you're valuable. Okay. So I know we're going to talk about, I think, pricing and the pre, but I, I wanted to give you that little tidbit of like, oh, I can't say that because I don't know that I can. So you can. So you're going to pay me, let's say, 8% to list your house. That's my fee. And then I'm going to make you 22% more. And then I'm going to do all the work. That sounds like a no-brainer. That's an investment. Because not only am I getting you more people to see this house, I'm able to bid people up against each other. And it's not just about the offer that you get. It's how much money you keep all the way to closing. Sometimes they're like, oh, just bring me a buyer. Just bring me a buyer. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you don't want me to do that. <laughs> I love you too much. And they're like, what do you mean? Oh no, <laughs> you don't want me on the other side of this deal. Yeah. It's not gonna go the way you want, you want it to go, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have a bad experience with an agent? Sometimes I ask them, immediately. Let me just ask you this. Did you have a bad experience with an agent? Yes. So I'm sure you don't mind paying somebody to, to perform a service, right? I could pull my tooth on my own if I wanted to right now. I'm not going to do that and pay a professional, but I could. I'm sure you don't mind paying people for a service, you just want them to know more about it than you do. Would that be a fair statement? This is how you disarm a FISA. And then you come in with facts and knowledge. This is how you close FISBOs. So we can talk more about FISBOs later in 101. That's my favorite person. Because if you come in with the knowledge, they're like, fine, take my money. Make me money. Sounds good to me, right? Okay.